Hello, welcome back to my allotment garden at the end of November in 2020. As you can see by my squinting eyes, the sun is shining. It's really bright, sunny day. We've got the blue sky behind us. It's absolutely gorgeous day to be here. I'm all wrapped up in my jumper because it's a little bit crisp today. I think we may have had a slight frost last night, but on the whole, November's actually been really rather mild. We've had some really warm, unusual days where it's been about 15 degrees. We've had barely any frosts. My plot especially has somewhat escaped the slight ground frost that we did have, which is why the dahlias are still here. <laughs> it's just rather strange. I would have thought I'd have lifted these by now, but it's actually bought me a little bit more time to, um, to sort those out. But anyway, it's been really rather mild, quite a strange month, to be honest. Uh, but I think it is starting to get a little bit colder from this week. As we go on the plot tour today, I've actually got quite a bit of food to harvest. I want to get all of my leeks up. I want to check out the celeriac, see how that's doing, harvest the remaining beetroot and all of the chilies and peppers that I still have in the polytunnel because I've not been able to harvest those yet. So we've got quite a bit to harvest today. I'll meet you at the gate. I'm gonna grab my truck and we'll start the tour. I've just noticed the ivy around my gate is growing all around it. I haven't pruned it at all this year, so it's looking very secret garden-esque. Oh, look at that sunshine. Oh, it's so bright I can barely see. I've got some good news though. That sycamore down the bottom corner of my plot is hopefully going to be cut back in the next couple of weeks. And I'm also going to cut back those trees behind the shed to open that up a little bit more and give me a good view down to the city that'll hopefully happen soon as well looking down at the pond area it's looking a little bit bare now no more flowers no more hosta in fact i did actually divide that the other week the blueberries are starting to lose all their foliage look look at that bright red stem now if i just spin round and look at this hedge Hello. <laughs> uh, this is actually hopefully going to have a bit of work in the springtime. I'd like to replant the lower part of this. I mean, I do have quite a thick hedge that I share with the next door, but I want to change some of these shrubs up and maybe put some roses in and some... I'm not quite sure yet, but it's, uh, it's going to change, that's for sure. And now we come to my leeks. Look like a little bit messy, straggly. <laughs> Remember, we've got quite a bit of rust on them. Just look at that foliage. It's covered in rust and all those speckles indicate allium leaf miner or even thrips maybe, but it's not looking good. Let's hope we have something that's edible. When I harvest my leeks, I follow Charles Dowding's method and actually cut them as close as I can to the base rather than pulling them so that there's minimal disturbance to the soil. And um, I've obviously multi-sown these, which is why they're in little clusters of twos and threes. And um, I think they've grown pretty well otherwise. It's just environmental impacts that have unfortunately had a bit of a um, negative effect on the plants. So in my truck here, I've got my trusty uh, open out knife that I use for a range of different garden jobs. So let's cut one of these. Also, they're a little bit shorter because I think they've been multi-sewn. So I'm now looking for damage by the Allium leaf miner. And you'll see these little marks along the um, stem. Not a very long stem, is it? Let's cut some of that foliage away. Miniature little league. <laughs> nice little size and actually that one I think seems to be okay the stem seems fine let's see how the others look now I can see damage here now this one's definitely had something tunneling in it. it does have some sort of split marks there I'm not sure how well you can see that little amber colored bug right here that is the alum leaf miner and the only way to really prevent it is to cover your leeks and that is the damage that they can make and they'll bury into your leeks 
and eat your crop. Uh, look, you can see there's another one hiding right there, channeling his way down into my leek. Uh, so I'm just going to harvest what I can, salvage what I can from it. You know, they're still perfectly edible. You just got to work around them. I think what I'll do is make a nice soup, leek and potato soup, and also freeze quite a few of these. I remember last year I actually kept them in almost all winter and I was still harvesting them all in February of this year. Well, there we go. That's my leek harvest for this year. Pretty feeble considering how many plants I had. They're not very thick or tall and they're covered in allium leaf miner. <laughs> but you know, you win some, you lose some. And um, that's what we've got for leeks this year. Moving on from the leeks, <laughs> the strawberry beds I haven't got round to tidying. I know I, I gave myself too many jobs for November, but the sweet corn plants I have chopped and dropped. And that's a method where, as the name suggests, you chop it up and drop it and leave it on the floor. And what that's going to do is mulch the soil, protect it a little bit from the elements over winter. It'll feed it as it all breaks down and if there is anything remaining on the surface when I need it, I'll just pop that into the compost bin. But I have left, as you might be able to see, the bottom stems of the sweet corn. So about 20 centimeters of growth here above ground, just in case we get any hibernating creatures like ladybirds. They like a few vertical stems to climb and help them fly away in spring once they've finished their hibernation. There hasn't been too much progress at this end of the plot really this month. The apple tree, look, it's lost all of its leaves. The rhubarb has completely gone now. A few of those leaves were just left to rot and enrich the soil. And we go down to the wildlife corner. But first I just want to show you my shed. Don't look in it, it's a mess. <laughs> We've got my pots there with lots of spring bulbs planted. There's a pair of videos all about my spring bulbs and here we are in the wildlife corner where it's all starting to get a bit wintry. That little hawthorn miniature hedge has uh, lost all its leaves and you see a lot of birds around here, lots of robins hopping about, sitting on those logs at the back. Still got some flowers though, let's have a look. It's almost December but we still have Cosmos. And the white Campanula is also still blooming. We've got some fever few. This stuff spreads like mad. <laughs> you might remember a few years ago, I actually ripped out most of the plants because it didn't leave any room for the others to grow. We've got some Salvia and a lorry backing up in the distance. Can you hear that? And look who that is. We've got my blue delphinium going for another bloom. And all the way down below the apple tree, we have one of my hardy geraniums. This is a new plant actually that I put in earlier this year. I want to hopefully get a lot of ground cover around this area, try and stop the weeds a little bit. I do kind of have plans to mix up the wildlife corner a little bit. Um, I, I kind of want to move some of the plants around, I may have mentioned it already, but I've also bought some alliums which are on their way. Yes, I bought more bulbs, <laughs> the plant included in my bulb haul video. But I want to get some alliums in here because there's a bit of a gap with my flowers around sort of early June and I'm hoping the alliums will fill that gap. But it only needs a little bit of a shuffle, which hopefully I'll, if I don't do next week, well, we shall see. And here's the view from the shed, that bright blue sky. Look here, we've got, still got straw flowers, lots more to pick. <laughs> My straw flower video is now out if you haven't watched it. All about how to grow them, in-depth guide and how to cut, harvest, dry and make some decorations as well. 
Now as we go down here, my nasturtiums are looking a bit sorry for themselves now. I think that little touch of frost has caught some of them. But I want to get some carrots harvested, so I'm going to get some of those next. My carrot bed is still covered in this netting just to protect it from the carrot fly because I do have a problem with carrot fly on my plot and these I all sowed in springtime. I didn't actually do an autumn cropping variety, a big one, so these are all miniature carrots, the shanty and nantes. So they're all quite dwarf but they're great for roasting whole. Well, would you look at that? I wasn't expecting one that big. <laughs> And they're also good for putting in casseroles and stews. I love that kind of comfort food as we go into winter. Whoa, look at that beast. Oh no, look what's happened. <gasps> wow, the bug's in that. It's completely split in half. And that means we've had a lot of sudden rainfall, which has burst it open. It's not been able to cope with all that water. And it's um, completely split. And all the bugs and slugs, we've got some wood lice, slugs, some worms, all really enjoying that carrot. <laughs> but these are absolutely great. And if you're not ready to harvest your carrots, you can just put some straw on the top that helps to protect them from the worst of winter. Or you can harvest and store them in sand. That's an old fashioned trick that works great and or you can freeze them you know there's lots of different methods for storing your carrots but we've got a great great harvest here and i've still got so many more to pick these are going to keep me going right until spring i think you know i used to be a really fussy eater as a child and um, carrots were actually the only vegetable i used to eat so yeah fun fact for you there I used to hate vegetables and look at me now, I've got a whole, <laughs> a whole plot of them. Well, I think that will do me for the week. I know they look a bit grubby. Our taps are now switched off so I can't actually go and wash these unless I use water from the water butt. I think I'll leave that one for the compost bin <laughs> for the critters to enjoy. Behind the straw flowers, there's not too much going on. Uh, we've got my spinach that's growing into a tree. <laughs> I'm actually leaving that to flower so I can save the seeds and also the pollinators will enjoy those flowers. And um, I might actually grab a few handfuls of my chard. Because these pink stems are just so delicious on a plate. And one thing that I actually love to do <clears throat> is to harvest a few stems, chop them all up and prepare them. And then if you get like a, I use silicone muffin trays and then you can freeze them in a little clump and then just throw them straight into your casseroles and stews. And uh, yeah, I think that'll do me nicely. And down near the seating area, we've got more pots filled with spring flowering bulbs. And oh, the Fatsia japonica. It's now flowering. Look at that. I don't remember seeing this one flower before. And the winter flowering clematis, the buds are still developing. But this will be blooming quite early compared to the one at work. The one at work tends to bloom in February time, if I remember rightly. And uh, looks like we're going to have a quite a long season hopefully with these. Now then this bed here where the potatoes were and the courgettes, that's all cleared. I've got two trays of wallflowers to plant. Once the dahlias are lifted, all of the garlic is now planted underneath that cover. That's just to protect them from birds that were trying to pull them out. Now this is my winter bed where we're going to harvest some parsnips, beetroot and celeriac. Now then I've spotted this one here. The foliage has actually flopped down to the ground. I'm not sure what's going on with it. We've had a couple of frosts, although I'm not quite sure how hard it's been on my plot. But I'm not going to harvest all the parsnips because they'll be sweeter after we have a lot more heavy ground frost. And um, 
but I'm just dying. I'm dying to see how my fastnips are doing under there, how they're growing, have they forked, do they look like monsters, how big are they, and I'm just going to harvest just one, I think, today, just to see how it's doing. So I've just been brushing away the soil and it's looking to be quite a wide parsnip but how deep does it go how long is it let's find out i'm hoping if i just slide this down the side i can get it out a bit like you would a dandelion root and loosen it all up obviously i don't want to spike into it but also i don't want to disturb the soil too much and that is really in there oh my god look at the size of that top i don't want to snap it <laughs> oh i'm just dreaming of roast dinners and casserole slow cooked good food with nice root veg oh my god oh if i lose this foliage i'm doomed nope I've got it. Oh my God. It's got legs. It's got three legs. Oh my God, three legs and a bit in the middle. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna be harvesting anymore. That will do me. Now I've got my celeriac over here and I know that they're not gonna be that big. They had a quite a short season. It's only my second year growing them and um, they've not bulked up too much but this one looks to be a good size yeah mine just aren't that big oh my god i'm pulling away quite a bit of the soil here which is not good give it a shake well there's a lot of roots on it which to me suggests that maybe it wasn't getting enough moisture and I didn't water them enough. Well, I've trimmed it up and it seems to be, you know, a small size, um, but it's also quite muddy. Needs a good scrub, but I'll take that home, do something with that. down in the side border. Look at this dahlia, Penhill watermelon. Much smaller in size now <laughs> than they used to be, but still here, which is quite a feat for the end of November. This border here is now empty. I've uh, tipped out a lot of spent compost onto this bed from the chili containers. There's a couple there still. And uh, I need to take down the pea frame so that those ends don't rot in the soil. Uh, and that bed's pretty much ready then for winter. Obviously my garlic is all in here. I'm going to have to hurry now because we're running out of daylight. <laughs> but the dahlias, as I said, they are still here. That one there, Cafe au lait. I've been cutting them and taking them home, which is why there aren't many blooms. But they're not blackened just yet. I think next week I'll probably end up lifting them because it's going to get a little bit wet over winter and I'm hoping we have a frost in the week to really knock them back and just to tell them that, you know, it's winter now, <laughs> go to sleep. <laughs> now inside the poly tunnel, I've been working a little bit to lift and take home my canna plants. Uh, that big water tank is now empty lots of bags of my compost oh yes i've also moved here this is my cape gooseberry plant i don't know if i showed you it before but it was outside in that bed in front of the polytunnel 
but it doesn't really like the cold so I've brought it in put it in a pot and uh, we've still got lots of flowers some fruits coming and it's such a sweet unusual fruit and I wish I grew more plants because I, I don't have too many but I'm really hoping that it'll continue to fruit for me throughout winter because I've only had a couple of them harvest so far. Sometimes you find that once they're ripe they actually drop off like this one but the casing hasn't turned completely yellow yet which suggests to me that it's still a little bit underripe but you peel back this papery casing and that's your fruit there. Well there's only way of finding out if it is ripe. Mmm. Oh yeah. It's like quite sweet, a bit sour, a little bit tropical. It tastes a little bit like a grape, but it's really hard to just uh, explain and describe. I really love Cape Bisqueries. I hope I can grow some more of them next year. But this plant is one that I actually overwintered. I grew it last year from seed, but it was so slow. And I kept it here over winter and it re-sprouted. Uh, so let's see if we can do the same. On the potting table, everything's the same as last month. My foxgloves and nigella are doing well. And I've got a lot more of the erigerum, that daisy flower, because I want to go a lot more of that everywhere next year. So not much changes there. But next up, we've got all of these chili peppers to pick. And we've got quite a few down there as well. We've got all of these bohemian goat scotch bonnet type peppers, the RG fantasy and the bubba. That's all dried nicely. I'm going to use them dried so that's good. Right, let's get my chug. And here's the final view of the plot from the top at the end of November 2020. That sycamore tree and that hedge at the back is going to change quite a bit over the next month or two. It's going to get a bit more bare, but now is the perfect time to be planning for next year. Well, it's really beginning to get quite chilly now this evening. It's approaching four o'clock, starting to get dark and I don't I don't know if you can hear all these birds, but I think they want to get to the bird feeders above me. So I should head home and um, start to preserve and cook all of this delicious food. I'm so pleased with my November harvest. I've got all of those chilies, my monster parsnip that I can't wait to either roast or put into a casserole or a soup. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it yet. And all those beetroots. I mean, I've had such a great year for beetroot. I want to make some beetroot crisps or chips if you're American um, with those. I've not tried that before. I've already got some chutney and some pickled beetroot on the go. And um, yeah, I'm just going to go get head home and warm up and um, I'll see you all next month. And what's going to happen next month? Well, I've got those dahlias to lift next weekend. I'm definitely going to get that done before it gets too wet over winter. The hedges are going to be done and um, lots of tidying up and planning for next year really but yeah i'm gonna head home now because it's getting really quite cold so i hope you're keeping well and safe i look forward to seeing you guys real soon until then take care bye bye mm -hmm.